Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. They will know you are Christian by your love, by your love. They will know you are Christian by your love. Think about that. I'm sure you've heard a couple of times, you know, could anybody convict you of being Christian? Better yet, being a Catholic Christian. Would anyone even know? Are you one that lives your faith in your heart? Or maybe you're the one that goes to church, mass every Sunday because you're supposed to, but otherwise pretty much don't think about God much at all. Or you're trying to build that relationship. But what's happening is the grace and the change that the Spirit is to be doing within you is somehow getting blocked or you're not taking the steps toward God yourself. Remember that meme. How can we ask God to guide our feet, our steps, if we aren't going to move our feet? And so when I got the message that this man, who everyone knew was a Catholic Christian, by the way that he loved people, by the actions and the words that this man spoke, And I didn't even know him personally. Yes, we said hi and all of that. We were in a couple of prayer groups together. But this man was a powerful witness. And what I mean by that is he was like, I don't know, 6'3", 6'4", big dude, not fat. Strong, solid, brick house kind of guy. Gray hair. Was in every morning for daily mass to pray the rosary before mass. He's a lector and he wore this cross that was like the size of my hand on him all the time outside of his shirt, his sweater, whatever season it was. reverent. As a matter of fact, he was the one that I noticed every time in mass, Jesus's name would be proclaimed. He would bow his head. And I started that practice, by the way, it really makes you pay attention. So if you are struggling with distractions in mass, Maybe you should start doing that. Anytime you hear the word Jesus Christ in the readings, in the liturgies, in the prayers, bow your head. I got that from him. And he's gone. He went through a horrific battle with breathing and lungs and got sick and he's gone. And it just made me reflect, what is my legacy going to be? Are people going to know that I'm a Catholic Christian by the way I live my life? 
I mean, honestly, the ministry itself doesn't necessarily mean that I am a kind, generous, Holy Spirit-filled person. Yeah, maybe people will know because I've got a ministry and I'm talking about it all the time, but I'm really just talking about people in my life who I exist with. What's the matter, honey? Sorry, I've got the little puppy. One more day with her and then then we got to clean this house from top to bottom because the hair is everywhere. <laughs> a yellow lab. I'll, I'll say no more. But that's really what it's all about is how are we acting? Oh, no, she's going to scratch a little. How are we acting with our friends, our families? Most importantly, the ones that we live with all the time. That's where the rubber meets the road. The people who know you the most, the people who take you for granted, the people who think you're full of you know what, <laughs> right? Oh yeah, sure, that's going to happen. It's just like Jesus, remember? Anytime he was in his hometown, nobody was believing him. He was obviously pouring out some grace, but not a lot because they denied him. And the only thing that I want us all to think about is what would we want people to say about us when we pass? And I remember there was this woman who had her son. I think he was a teenager. Don't know exactly his age. And, you know, it's been, it's been horrible for her, you know, to lose her, her son and She's had a lot of support. All of his friends, you know, love her and try to support her through this. And she said to me, one of the best things ever were that people called him kind. Because it's really not just being out there with a big cross the size of your head on your chest. It's not necessarily talking about Bible verses and quoting things. It's truly about how you act, what you say and what you do. I want people to know I am Christian by my love. I want people to know that I was different. That I seeked Jesus always to find that peace, that joy, that love that was somehow being sucked away through evil or circumstances or even my own self. Because sometimes we can be our own worst enemies. We take ourselves down that rabbit hole and we think about all these horrific things that could happen and yet at the same time we know darn well that we have no clue what's going to happen in the future that we're supposed to be living in today and when we live in the future and allow Satan to have us go through these situations and we kind of like make up the worst case scenario and then we get we spin out of control in this type of I don't know mindset. And if we would just, now she's licking her paws. If you hear the dog in the background, sorry. <laughs> she is cute. But that's the deal. I mean, when we're, when you're really trying to be an obedient Christian, that's one thing, right? I want to do God's will. I don't want to sin. But once you're beyond that, then you're in the situation of, I need to become a better person. And that means if you get in an argument, you're the first one to be the bigger person the godly person, the Jesus person. 
and you say you're sorry. And you mend that broken relationship. Saying you're sorry doesn't mean you're weak. Saying you're sorry means I'm done being angry. Because God wants us to love one another and we're human beings. We make mistakes and sometimes we make real bad mistakes. Maybe not even thought through kind of mistakes. But even if it is, maybe someone intentionally tried to hurt you. And you said some horrible things to that person. Still being the bigger person and saying, I'm sorry for saying those things. I was really hurt. And then allowing God to help change your heart, to forgive them. We're kind of going off on a little side tangent here, but I like using examples Because this is real life and we want to know, like, how practically can I do this? But I guess the real question is this. When you die, what do you want people to remember about you or to say about you? The, The daughter of this man wrote the email and it got sent out to everybody. And what her father was saying in the midst of all this pain and agony and these reach outs to everyone for prayers. He was like, look, honey, this is just a journey here on this earth. The real life is an eternity. Don't be sad. And her daughter said, you know, dad, my human person's going to miss you. (laughs) I know the promises of Jesus. Sorry, my eyes are filling. I'm kind of tearing up here. Because life is short, everyone. Oh, it's so short. And we need to be light. We need to be light to everyone. They know We are Christians by our love. How do we treat ourselves? How do we treat others? How do we treat even animals and anything living? How do we appreciate the day and the nature and creation all around us? How do we glorify God in our lives? What is our legacy? So let's pay attention today. Let's live with meaning and purpose. Let's pray for God to give us the heart and fill us with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Those beautiful gifts that God just pours out in us. Go be love. Have a blessed and inspired day.